Here, go to Miss Leah so you can say hi to your parents. They're not on there, but come on, get on here for a moment. All right, so last week, so last week, we started out talking about when we do word study, what's important is three main questions. Now I'm gonna test you, not because I want to see what you know, know. but to t- but to see what you remember. Anybody know one of the three questions? Any of the questions? I remember. I'm just stuck. I'm so stuck on the fact that it was like not clicking to me. I remember, <laughs> I remember right. the sermon starting off as in in the beginning basically whoever was talking god made this this and this and you was basically saying oh we're so used to hearing it we didn't go into depth with it and we need oh we to, didn't deal with it as it was presented yeah, we we didn't like break it down to try to go in depth and get the, the understanding of it and basically when i mean by the understanding From what you're saying. is by god i remember god is the word so in the beginning there was the word and god is the word and god because god is the word the word was then the transition into the actual biblical word and then the word became flesh and basically john said this is the person who is higher than me and will achieve more than me i don't know you know, you're telling <laughs> I, guess I don't have the correct words, but I know what I'm trying so, to display. So here's what you here's what you got to know. Yeah, I'm not looking for correct words, no. and what I'm looking for is what we recall, okay. what we thought, and why. Okay, and so gotta look for something. What? I remember I, I kind of related to a childlike memory, stating that when I was a child and I didn't know God, but I first heard God, basically I felt like God chose me, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know him. What you, re- I chose what you were talking about him. is where you resonated with uh, uh, that he called, he made it possible for us to become children of God. Yeah, why did those I choose who to follow on, him? Yeah, those who believed on him. So I chose to follow him because I guess my spirit said so. Because I could have easily been like, oh, this is just rubbish at a young age and just go play with my friends. But something about it, how it was presented to me to like, it was a sight. Because obviously you have adults that are trying to make it exciting and trying to grab you in. And like, even though they would say, oh, you can play games, you have snacks. But at the end, they they wanted you to have a connection with him and understand that you are his child. Yes. So, yeah, I'm stuck on it in the beginning. God was flesh. God, it was the word and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and he made the light separated from the dark. Girl, you need to stop farting, like, for real. All right, we good. I just wanted to make sure I had the right setting. So... Either she goes still going, or that smell just lingering. So, you you gave some some great recaps. What we want to start with is, in recapping, three questions, and then we want to... Now you want to talk? And we want to recap in what the main ideas were in the first chapter I'm, I'm gonna do it for you you don't have to do it okay. the word of god <laughs> exactly the first three the three questions was were i'm sorry when we are studying the word of god we want to answer these three questions what does it say what does it mean and then what does it how does it apply to us how should we apply it basically So when we read the text from the context of what does it say, we're not looking at it from the context of what we know it says. We're looking at it, okay, we're reading it as though we are reading it for the first time. This is what it says. What does what it say mean? And based on what it means, how should we put that into practice? 
basically we should start trying to change our lives to fit our lives into what the word of God says? A little differently. We should conform our lives to what the life. What I the thought you said you didn't care about words. It is important. <laughs> you just I didn't, told no, me. I told you, you didn't I, didn't care, I didn't care earlier. I was at the also question. Not, I asked. You it. No, I didn't change it. When the question I, I asked, all I wanted you to do was give me. Like, I'm not, I wasn't looking for anything at that point. At oh, so this you point, just wanted that information that I yes. had on my brain. But now you care about words. I'm answering conform. your question. Conform. So, to be clear, to make sure you understand what you were saying, I have to say conform. In other words, you want your life to line up with what you have just come to the awareness of. Yes. That's what that is. But a lot of people try to mold the Bible around their lives. I was one of those people. That's the problem. See, when you study the word for to make it fit you, then you're not studying the word. You're actually doing what the lady did that we talked about. These men are servants of the most high God and they preach to you the way of salvation. You're trying to use it for your benefit rather than using it for its intention. Oh, so I, mean, I, so I would use it for my benefit as in like, God, I need a blessing. <laughs> yeah. If I don't get that blessing, then you must not be God. I wouldn't say that. No, no, no. But but that's <laughs> that's what that's what within we are evidencing. It's like, oh, since you didn't do this, then I need to look for somebody else. Yeah. Or I need to look to something else. Yeah. Whereas in Christ Or I need to stray away. That exactly. was my thing. I was just stray away. In, in, in Christ, we leave it on. Leave it on. I'm sorry. Point, oh, we got different goals. Look at that. And so so Knowing that the three questions that we should have in our mind when we study God's word is, what does it say? <laughs> what does it say? I'm going to come back and say it. Why? What does it say? What does it mean? How should we apply it? How should it be applied? I tried today. You tried the word of God. Well, I didn't preach, but I mentioned it. Yeah. Oh, she was witnessing somebody or inviting them. How should I what? Which wait, which question you're on? What does it mean? How should I what is it? it? So uh what does it say? What does what it, say? it mean? What does it say? What does it mean? How should it be applied? Why would you be saying that? I'm like, really? You should wait until the video after this. Yeah, I was telling um, Sean. <laughs> there you go. Sean. Yep. Is it Washon or Deshaun? Washon. Wa. It's a wa in yeah. front of it. Washon. Yeah, man. Who, Jesus? <laughs> it's like Sean. I told you it's okay. But yeah, I try to use, I try to, um, because God said, like, you know, you need to be like, What's it called? Fishermen of souls or whatever. Fishers of men. Yeah, they, they, that, that part. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I don't know. I was literally just doing my work. And out of nowhere, I just started thinking about it. I was like, oh, you know, like, because I looked at the calendar. And I was like, oh, church about to open up. You know, I'm about to go to my second track. And then Lauren was sitting on the left of me. And I was just like, and I was like, I asked about church and I was like I saw laughing out loud I was like I don't know if I asked this girl that and then it wouldn't go away the thought would not go away so I asked her and I was just like hey do you go to church and she was like no my grandma does and then I went back behind my chair <laughs> so oh here, it didn't end there so it here's, got worse here's here's the beautiful part about what she said there's there was commitment to communicating that there's an opportunity to grow in Christ, right? In that, there's a valuable awareness that you want to have. Remember, Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Yeah. So it's not that we should be fishers of men. That's important. But we are to be because we have been made to be. Well, I think, honestly, it's not like, I feel like now that I'm talking about it, 
it didn't come out of anywhere because like before church, like before I go to work, I do say these, I say multiple prayers, but I will say, God, let your spirit be known in that in my workplace, change every touch and change each and every soul, soften their hearts and let them be slow to hatred and anger. And I was like, you need to use me as a vessel, do so. And then I think today was that day I had to invite her and she rejected it, but it's okay. <laughs> well, to, today could have been the day that you started the invitation. I think it was that way. I don't want to keep doing it. Like if I get rejected once, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> so, so think about what you just said. If if Christ said because we rejected him once that he won't. Well, she rejected three times actually. But still. Because then after that, I was like, oh. My this this baby right here rejected Christ. I don't know how many times. <laughs> before she came to faith. This one did too. And we did too. We all did. did how, how many invitations? We can't even count them. How many invitations did the word of God give us that we did not submit ourselves to? Well, that's what the, the, well, Sean said. <laughs> and she I didn't even know she said that to you. <laughs> well, no, she was saying like I was planting the seed, so maybe I'm not the person that's going to bring her to church. I'm just the starting point that just putting it in her yeah. thought process. But you could also be a waterer too. Yep. It's possible. What's a waterer? Basically, so one person. I got a plant car. That was the first time I watered that plant. <laughs> maybe it had never been a seed, so, so or maybe there had been a seed. Sometimes we are the seed. <laughs> it was some dirt. Sower. We are the seed sower and the waterer. So you know. So Hold when we me. when we think in context of the the three questions right and in those three questions we look at the text we we were in last week which was john one and one through was it uh, 18 when when we're in john one and one through 18 last week what we were let me make sure my was on bar break stop girl Busy. So when we were Tootie, when we were in one and one through eighteen last week, what we focused on was one, the introduction of the word, which is a if if you don't think like the Jews of his time and even the Greeks of his time, it's like a foreign concept. I don't even understand fully the Jews are Greek, so. So the main thing about those Jews at that time was that for them, the word meant that this was God. So when people would hear the word of God, they associated that with something that comes and came from God. The Greeks, they looked at the word as this special knowledge and this special ideology that influenced what people did, how they thought, how they felt, how they believed. So two different, two different backgrounds. Who was the Pharisees? They were on the Jews side. So the Jews was so a general false. idea. So false, whether they were false, true, whether they were Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, whether they were believers or unbelievers, those who were associated with Jews, they had this idea of what the word meant. Those who were Greeks or Gentiles or non-Jews had this idea of what the word meant, okay? So because of that, the presentation of the use of word as an identity, as a name, was something to confound them and catch their attention to say, whoa, first of all, you're saying in the beginning was the word. What do you mean? In the beginning was the word. Because now the word is flesh. And then the word was God. Hold up. The word was God. The word was with God. Okay, so now you got these ideas of multiple gods. No, it's not multiple gods. It's just one God. But he's in multiple persons. So he's creating all of these different ideas as the introduction to his message because he wants to communicate a certain belief and perspective. Nope, don't grab that girl. She went right for it. She went right for it. So John's point was to create perspective. Come on over here, girl. 
Jonah's point was to create perspective that created attention and drew attention to the readers because not only was the word God, but he says that the word did uh, something. Thought, uh, no. The word became flesh. In other words, he's saying the word became human, right? Yeah. And that human was the son of God, who as the son of God gave us access to becoming children of God. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it wasn't anything that we did except to believe on him because he said, for those who believed on him, talking about the word, the word that was made flesh, the word who was God, the word who was the son of God, he found himself in the position that only he could be in to give us access to God but not just access to God, to become children of God by believing on him. Now, this part right here is very unique because before we get into the second portion, which is John's testimony, there was something that was said. It said, and the word became flesh. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I skipped over. I know my face. Is oh, we're continuing where we left off. And then we're moving forward. Oh, so it says there was a man sent from God whose name was John, right? Watch this. I want y'all to hear this part. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives life to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Okay. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Okay. I read all of that. Primarily to start with this part where it says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Okay. He came as a what? Do y'all remember? John came as a what? Messenger. Witness. Uh, yeah, I can remember. Witness. To do what? Bear witness about the light. Why did he come to bear witness about the light? You see yourself to preach that, that all may believe through the light. Yeah. Wait, say it again. It says all what? It says. No, I heard it part. John came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. Who is him? God. The light. The light. And the light was who? God. And the God was who? God. The word. The word. So we've got all of these thoughts and perspectives about God and that God, the word, the light was here to do something, but he didn't do it on his own. Who helped Christ? God. Yes, he did. But we're talking about a specific individual who helped Christ. Who was it? John. He was a what? A witness? A witness. Oh, because if you're about to say that the word helps help Christ, I was about to be Come confused. sit down and don't move. I was like, wait. Sit down and don't move. You can sit right here by me. You want to sit by me? Ooh, okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. Say that again. If I was going to say. Is it like that? Really? Oh, it's time for me to go. Okay. Good night, night. Get a nice little bath. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Here you go. Bye, Dirty. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Oh, you still smell like. Mm. Well, let's hurry up and get you in there. You gonna leave me about this probably something by myself? I'm gonna be right. You gonna be my backup? I'm gonna be my backup. <laughs> I 
I can't do more. Man. I'm trying to get her out of here. I guess it's you and me then. <laughs> nah, you did. All right. So, John was a what? Witness. A witness. Yes, let me just go. Let me type this up. You Why is that important, me. though? John was a witness. Because we are humans, and because we believe in facts, we need somebody to validate what is and who is for us to be true believers or even have an inkling to believe something. Because True. if somebody came and just said, I am this, without having no witnesses, and just because, we'd be like, yeah, whatever. So watch this. Was that a little bit of right? Like it, 10%? Okay, that is true, <laughs> okay? But remember our three questions. What mm -hmm. does it say? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. How must it be applied? She's actually giving, giving the little one a bad. Z, don't go back there. Leave her alone. Z, go play. She's with her mom. Go play. So it says, there was a man sent from God. How is it that we are able to be of God? True question. It's not. How do we come from God? All right, watch this. Remember after this. Out of me. Hold on. Remember after this statement about him being the witness, it says that this witness bears witness about what? The light, about him who is the light, right? The light does something. The light gives light to everyone, right? And then it says that to all who did receive him and believe in his name, that light, he gave, the light gave, the right to become children of God who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God. So I asked this question why is what was said about John important for us? Well, when we become children of God, we can witness about God but that's only when we become children of God think about it the the conversation we were having earlier about the, the 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 woman who had a spirit of divination in acts right and she's walking around following them right I'm still processing what you just said I know come with me just I'm gonna bring you back there the woman that was following Paul and all the other people who were believers mm -hmm. they were he was they were following they were going somewhere and this woman kept saying these men are the servants of the most high god who proclaim to you the way of salvation she kept following them and saying that kept following them and saying that she was marketing basically mm -hmm. for her services okay was she proclaiming the truth were they the men of the Most High God, were they servants of the Most High God who proclaimed the way of salvation? Is that a true question? No. What she said was true. And what she said was true, right? Yeah. But was she witnessing about God? No. What was she doing? She was in trying to have self gain. She was hustling. She was basically being a speaker. And saying things out loud just because if she says this and if that is happens to be true, maybe somebody walked up to them and asked them. But and then they were like, oh, well, if she knew that, then I wonder what else does she know? Absolutely. She repented. So instead of going to them and, and, and seeking them to know God, 
they probably want to seek her because she knew something that they didn't that without having them without them verbally saying it so they would look at her like she's higher than them yes now watch this so we're going to skip over to where we stopped last week john 1 and 19 and this is the testimony of john It tells us that John was a witness, right? Mm -hmm. But then he's brought on the stand to witness. Mm -hmm. In other words, to testify of Christ. Okay. All right. So. Did John die? He did. He got his head cut off. This oh. is, we're a little bit ahead of that, but yes, he did. After he witnessed? Oh, yeah. After he baptized Jesus and everything else. People... No, 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 no. So after he told, he testified, they basically killed him? No, no, no. Not immediately. Oh. This, so you got to keep reading. Okay. We, we're not trying to jump ahead. So watch this. John, not the baptizer, but John the apostle, John the disciple is writing this, okay? Mm -hmm. Then there was John the Baptist, the one who was baptizing people. Who was, mm -hmm. They said a crazy man. He so was, who testified? The Baptist? John the Baptist. Okay. okay? His cousin. God's yeah, cousin. Jesus' his cousin. Okay? okay? Now watch this. Remember... Jesus' name is not introduced yet, is it? Have we heard the name Jesus yet? We've heard the word. Oh, I was say, I didn't read the Bible. I don't know. No, but <laughs> but when we read it, we, we heard word, right? We, we heard, heard the name word, of the word, light. God. We heard God. We heard light. We heard, uh, what else did we hear? It was God, the son word. We heard son of God. We heard light. But no. But we, we haven't heard many, Jesus. Many names, and then we heard John, but he, he wasn't God, you know. We heard the Father. We heard all those names. So Jesus hadn't been introduced yet in this text. Okay? So now we get a little more information about John. Okay? John, this kind of goes back to even the uh, question you asked earlier about the, the lady. Today? today is Thursday. Sweet baby Jesus, tomorrow is Friday. You have you. So I gotta go somewhere. <laughs> All right. So now John the Baptist begins to serve in a very specific role of witnessing. Mm -hmm. it says, and this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Why did he say that? Because of Yon. Okay, watch this. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? What did he say? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. So he, he still didn't give his name. They knew who he was, his name, but they're. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He still didn't say what his name is. He only said what he was basically, I am the one who, who was called to do this. But there's a reason he did. You got to know the context of... He could have easily said, this is my name, but he's like, no. Well, they knew his name was John. But, but that's what I'm saying. He could have just said, my, like, said if, somebody, if somebody said, ask, say, what's your name? I'm like, oh, Ebony Jones. But if I choose not to say who my, my name is, but say, I am the one who God called and chose and like did all this, there's a reason why he was stating that, right? Yes, absolutely. So they asked, then why... Are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? See, what they were trying to find out was not only who you are, but why are you doing this? Meaning, Elijah. whose authority? See, Who's Elijah? the scripture in old. I knew you were going to ask this question. In the Old Testament, it actually says that there would be one who would be coming before Jesus. He would be a forerunner. I'm paraphrasing it. We'll read it another time. He would become before Jesus and he would go before him in the spirit of Elijah. So they automatically, the people who were Pharisees, religious leaders, 
they automatically assume that the one who would forerun Christ, meaning come before him and prepare the way for him, would be the name Elijah. So they were looking for a person named Elijah. So he's not Elijah, and what's the other two? He's not the prophet, and he's not the Christ. Why did they say, why they say prophet? So? Because they said that the Messiah would be the prophet. So they asked him, one. Isn't the Messiah God? The Messiah is, is the anointed one. He's the Christ. That's the same term. Jesus, Christ basically. and Messiah, right? And Jesus is the Christ. It's so, all in one. So Jesus is his name. Christ is his title. It's kind of like king. That's what Christ means. King. Anointed one, really. So Christ is more like a title than it is a name. Okay. That makes sense? Uh-huh. So they're asking, are you the Christ? Or the prophet. Which or the, the prophet. Meaning the, the prophet and the Christ were the same person in the Old Testament writings. Yeah. yeah. Okay? No. Uh -huh. you, you wouldn't? No? Mm -hmm. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I'm hurting right now. But yeah. Okay. I got you. So he was none of, none of those titles. He and was not said, Elijah. So who basically gave you the authority to... That's, to so they're trying to understand... If you're baptizing, which in their custom was a cleansing, a ceremonial yeah. cleansing, if you're, why are you baptizing? Because we didn't send you to baptize. See, they're coming from the context of, if you're doing this, you're doing it under some authority. Whose authority are you doing it under? So they asked specifically, are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? Are you the Messiah? Are you the Christ, basically? Because... If you are those three, then we can't mess with you according to the law. But, but if, he's not, not those three, so that's why he gave that statement saying, I'm the one who coming from the wilderness crying. He said, I am the I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Why he said make straight the way of the Lord? Because prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight. But he's not Elijah, though. Didn't you say Elijah? Watch this. Remember I told you. The scripture said that he would go in the spirit of Elijah. So they're looking for a person to be named Elijah rather than a person to have similar spirit and authority as Elijah. Oh. oh. That's it. You see what I'm saying? So, so it's not about the name, basically the title or having this statement. It's exact, about, uh, they were looking at, because you see the question they asked then why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Because we didn't send you. The Pharisees didn't send you. The Sadducees didn't send you. The chief priest didn't send you. The high priest didn't send you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So who gave you this authority is what they're trying to really find out. Watch this. John answered, I baptize with water. But among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptized. Now, that's where it stops in that section. We're not going to go past that today. Okay. He said God was born after him? Yes, Jesus. 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 Jesus is God. You might have to go get, get these titles wrong. Right. Jesus is God. I know. So okay? can I just say God, though? It's important that you say it within the context of his humanity, but also give regard to his divinity. Okay? You know what would be tripping me out, though? What's that? The fact that God is the son of God, but basically still God, that is a whole loop in itself. All right. Let's do this. Okay. All right, I want to use my little family, all right? Mm -hmm. my, my family. Mm -hmm. All right, I am Leo, right? God doesn't have a wife, so... Just, just follow me. <laughs> I, I want you to understand how limited we are in our understanding of God if we look at it simply in human terms. You with me? Okay. Okay, listen to me carefully. Leo is a man, correct? Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sean is a woman. Got it. Okay. The children come from who? Y'all. Correct. 
Now watch this. I want you to hear this. When you see this picture, forget you know us and take that picture back to the original man and woman. Adam and Eve. Correct. Adam was made, right? Yeah. And then when did Eve come? From the rib. Okay. So watch this. Adam existed and out of Adam then came the woman. So they were what? One. Correct. Were they one in body? No. They were two different bodies. But were they one? Yes. Why? Because she came from him. Mm -hmm. Not only did she come from him, but he took her unto himself when she was brought to him. Okay? So it evidenced that they are what? One. One. Then from them came what? Children. What's another term we use to describe children? Fruit. Fruit. Oh, for real? Yeah. The yeah. fruit of the womb? No. Never okay. Heard of it. You've never heard of it. It's in the scripture. Okay. The fruit of the womb, Not right? <laughs> Do we also use the term produce? Yeah. Okay. Watch this. You have a seed, mm -hmm. okay? You have a tree. That tree and that ground, that you have a seed and it goes into the ground. Watch this. And that seed in the ground becomes a what? A tree? Sure. So I that- I was gonna say vine, but all right. Vine tree is, is really all the same. Yeah. So the tree then produces what? Produce. Which we also call fruit for the vegetables. Okay. So that fruit, is it a part of the tree? Yes. Is the tree a part of the fruit? Yes. Is the ground that the tree came out of a part of oh, the tree? It's all, connected. it's all one, even though they have different personalities. So can the tree be the tree without the ground? Can the ground produce the tree without the ground? No. And can the fruit be produced without the tree in the ground? No. Okay. In the same manner. So God exists in three persons. Where the father is who he is and the son comes out of the father. These are the things we have understand and the father and the son out of them come the spirit of god for the spirit of god speaks the will of the son but also the will of the father for the father and the son jesus said or what one and so god jesus spirit of god father son see Spirit, the Spirit, the Son, who is also the Word. Father, Son, Spirit. Exactly. And the Spirit is in us. So that's where and, we are at. And they're all God. That's how we get a connection to them from the Spirit. Just like I, my wife, my children are connected with my parents and grandparents because of the roots. So... We are connected with God because of the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. So my wife and my children are connected with my parents and grandparents because of me. Does that make sense? So in the same way that the spirit gives us to connect with the father and the son, so I give my wife and my children the ability to connect with my parents. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? So it's not about the specific functions of our life, meaning husband to wife and what we do as husband and wife. It's more so what our functions represent so that I, as a husband, represent not just Christ and with Sean as a wife, don't just represent the church. We also in our roles represent the father, the son, and our children represent the spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Everything 
everything about our existence is designed to speak to the essence of God's nature. So God has the nature of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. But God also has the nature of being in fellowship with nature, with its creation. What do you mean? So we, the people, are a reflection of God, for he created us in his what? Image? And his likeness. So we yes. Likeness. So image means we look like him. Likeness means we behave like him. I have a question. Sure. You know how God, they say God don't make a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to go a little bit off track here. You're not off track, actually. Well, God makes us in his image and he doesn't make a mistake. So how do you get one, people being born and want to be transsexual? Or two, people being born for both genders. Okay. You're talking about with hermaphrodites? Yes. Okay. So when it comes to... Is that like a disformity or something? On the one hand, it could be, but... Because then you have to make that choice. Do you want your child? No, you, you don't actually make a choice. And the reason you don't is because what happens is... And people don't talk about this scientifically they are able to assess the body to determine what internal organs you have so an external organ when you have the dual presence through hermaphrodites is not the determining factor at that point you have to evaluate what is the reproductive system because you may have two genitalia but that doesn't mean you have the same reproductive system and that's the thing that people don't talk about so men and women have different organs? Men and women have different reproductive systems. Really? Yes. Oh, no, we don't we don't have men don't have uteruses. We don't have fallopian tubes. We don't have the ability oh, for yeah. our, that's what I mean, reproductive organs. Oh. So internally, while they might have externally the presence of both genitalia, internally they only have the presence of one reproductive organ. So what happened if they made that choice? And you look at what your what anatomy happened? says. I know. What happened if they made a choice going off the anatomy and then the child was like, oh, So well. the anatomy is not only external. See, when you have the presence of both, then you must look to the internal anatomy to confirm. That's what I'm saying. So if you make a choice, it should be based on the information you have. And if they go, so I don't know. All right. So no, let's say I'm no, a father. No, that part was right. I let, got let's that. say I have a father. But I'm trying to figure out how is it so many homosexual, lesbian, transgender minded people? Yeah, because I have them in my family and I love them. I have them in mine too. The problem is they need to be born again because we are all born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Do you have those hard conversations with them every time you say them? No, we don't have those conversations because they don't want to hear them. Oh. I teach them to my children. I teach them to those who need to hear them from the, the word of truth. And then if they want to have those conversations and they don't want to believe it, it is what it is. I warn and move on. But you can still be cordial, right? Absolutely. Uh, my, one in my family is my dad's sister who is nine months younger than him. Supposedly married. Yes. For sure she says she is. Did it legally. Was living together, behaving as such prior to the opportunity to do so within the context of the Constitution authority. It does not change what he said. And the only way she will change her mind is that she's got to be born again. She's got to conform to this. See, I don't feel like I have the authority to tell somebody that they're going to hell or not. You don't. You tell them what the witness said. You're a witness. That's why I pointed that out. We are witnesses. I don't have the authority to say other than what this says. So I'm telling you what he said. I had to receive and believe. Watch this. It says he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, which means his authority. How do we know authority? Because they start asking John about authority. 
They were not just asking him, who are you? Meaning, tell me your name. They were trying to find out what authority is determining what it is that you are doing. When it comes to us as believers, the question that people have when they say, so who do you think you are? What does that mean? That is an indignant response to the fact that you are checking them, not you, but the spirit you have submitted yourself is checking them through you. John, this man said that these folks were generations of vipers. Snakes? Yes. <laughs> he, he, said, he said some straight up crazy stuff to them. That's funny. He said that they was just straight up snakes. <laughs> now, guess what? Who are you to say that? This man was sent from God, the scripture told us. What was he sent from God to do? To bear witness about the truth. He got his head cut off for bearing witness. But guess what? Fear not him who is able to destroy the body. Ooh, look who show up. You come in at a good time. It's getting good up in here. I think my spirit is feeling every time I talk about God. Is it getting big time? Get more information. We can't hear you. The more it feels unsettled. Where's the baby girl? So that's actually good. Can you hear? Like, I hear y'all. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> we can't hear you. You can't hear me? You don't have your audio on? Yeah. You do? I just unmuted it just to make sure to. Hold up. I think I know what's going on. You muted me? Say something now. Hello? Uh-oh. No, Hello? I need something wrong. Hold on. All right, say something now. Hold on. No, I can hear you now. I'm talking. Okay. We can hear you now. I'm gonna say you, you muted me. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I had it on the wrong uh, speaker setting. Oh, okay, cool. I have to is make baby sure. Emma, is baby Emma with you right now? She is getting ready to go down. Oh, I want to say <laughs> hi. I just want her to see our face. Is she good? She's been uh, doing all right. She's good. She's good, you know. She do a she do a little fussy thing with us to go see. So she just got her bath and stuff. So, Aww. let me see if she's still sleeping. What's up, man? Yeah. <laughs> hey, y'all come in at the good time. We just got good. Hold on. Hi, Robbie. Hello. Wait, where's Ebony? Over here. I hear you, girl. I don't see you. Where you at? You're invisible I'm now. Who does God made y'all invisible? It's the spirit of Ebony. <laughs> Girl, that's your soul talking. That's your soul. I'm dead. The soul without the body. We was over here talking about some deep-rooted stuff. Oh, okay. Bringing up the past. Bringing that's up why the he was stuff. like, no, it's not really the past. It's like the presence of like gays and homosexuals and like trying to have an understanding. Everybody's talking about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Chrissy's mom should come join. Oh, hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> What's the inside joke between me and Ebony? Did you hear him? Let me take this light here. She is sitting. Huh? <laughs> I was whispering it. <laughs> I mean, look, what you need? You need a towel? What? I think I bled her on her couch. You farted on her couch? No, shut up. <laughs> No. No. Robbie's the worst. <laughs> Tell him about all you. Shut up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, how y'all wonderful people doing today? Tired. 
That's good. We all are. All right. <laughs> I ain't slept all night. <laughs> <laughs> That's good too. Well, I'm ready for it. Let's get it. All right. So, so we we are in John one field. What do you have, son? Stop! I told you don't mess with that. <laughs> we are in John one. Watch it. We got from John one and one through eighteen, and then yeah, we move into one and nineteen through twenty-eight. Okay. Yeah, let me she's grabbing my phone so I can get the Bible. Gotcha. Are y'all getting feedback when y'all talk? Or is it clear? It's clear. Okay, cool. Because I, I wanted to make sure I didn't have my speaker up too loud. That first John? Yeah, so. We are back in First John, and so um, Ebony had a question, and I'll recap it real quick, and it's a two-part question. So the, the question is, how do we deal with those people who are born with multiple genitalia uh, as her hermaphrodites, right, from the word of God? and their decision and all of that and then going that real? forward again i didn't even know that was actually real yeah it is and and i'm gonna answer the question and then the next one was so then how do you deal with people who uh live as homosexuals lesbians transgender etc right and so this she said this is uh, this is probably off subject and i said no it's not <laughs> And there's a reason I said it's, it's not off subject. And I'm, I'm going to answer the question, the two questions, and then I'm going to explain why it's not off subject, because this is kind of where I came in. When it comes to those who have multiple genitalia, we have to look at anatomy. And people say, okay, so if they have both present, how can we look at anatomy? We must go internal. So anatomy is not only external. It's also what? Internal. Internal. So we must look for what the internal organs tell us. The internal organs will tell us if it is male or female because men do not have reproductive, reproductive organs that are called uterus, fallopian tube, and things of that sort, okay? Neither do women have sperm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, some people say, you shouldn't talk about this from the word of God. Yes, you should. He said he made them both male and female. And there are distinctions of whether or not there is male or female. Correct? Yep. Now she makes her grand entrance. Come on over here with the baby. I see. Oh, man. I see a shadow. I see a baby shadow. <laughs> Where's my girl? Sit down. He with her. Oh my god, I gotta go finish cleaning that. Hi guys. Why are you doing this? Look, who is that? In the flesh. <laughs> she said sleeping. Who is that? I'm sorry. You're good. good. I, was, I, said, I sat in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. She's so cute, girl. <laughs> Who is that? Nice. Literally, when I thought she was going to be seeing you guys, she was smiling. Here, come sit with mommy then. Come sit over here. Hi, Emma. Emma, girl. Hi, baby. Hi. So happy. <laughs> she, I feel good. You eat good. You had a good day. You're so happy. You want to say hi to Bubba? Say hi. You blushing, baby? Hi. Are you blushing? They were shaking and stuff. Hey, I didn't say get away. I said get off the table. You can come sit over here if you want to. Okay. Yeah. I just see Elon. Good work. Good girl. You're so happy. She's so chill. Oh, there she goes. You happy girl. So. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. 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 
So does that make sense that we look to the internal anatomy? Does that make sense? I didn't hear you. Did you say something wrong? Okay. Yes. Why do we look to the internal the internal anatomy? I, uh, I don't know that because we are looking to the truth. We are looking to the truth. We are looking for the truth. Right. That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for what satisfies us. Are we? We're not. When we look no. internally for that. Oh, okay. Can you go home? All right. So. What happens is because we're looking to internal anatomy, because we're looking to the truth, there's the reality that we don't just get to make a choice of what it is that we are. Who we are and what we are has been defined for us. Make sense? So watch this. So if you go and you then look at the question of, you look at the question of what about homosexuals? What about transgenders what about lesbians what about all that list what do we say about that we say what the word says which is you must be born again why did not did not paul at one point say that he talked about all the different types of um, sexual and immoral behavior and he said such were some of you did he say that Mm -hmm. So the reason he says such were some of you was because later on he began to give awareness about the fact that there had been the experience with Christ to where they were born again and no longer submitted to that old way of thinking and that old way of believing and that old way of feeling. And all three of those deal with the mind, the will, and the emotions. We're on the same page. So then Ebony says, well, I don't think I have the authority to tell anybody that they're right or wrong as it pertains to. I say going to hell. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> she says she doesn't have, she says she doesn't believe she has the right to tell someone that she has the right to tell someone that they're going to hell because of the choice of their lifestyle. I said, none of us do, but this does. Yeah. And if, if we believe this, if we have received this, then we are in the position. Oh, my goodness, girl. Then we are in the position to where this will come out of us as witnesses for it. You know how we know? Let's go back to what, what is the difference? About the you're saying, so you're saying um, uh, someone being homosexual or whatever. Uh, uh, goes to that's a sin, of course, uh, and it's going to hell. Is that what was just said? Well, the scripture says they are condemned already because of their sin or because of the homosexual, because of their sin, and that is sin. So, but what would make a difference? Between, so, what would make a difference between? Someone who claims to be a, a Christian that keeps on sinning that's not a homosexual. Say that one more time. Hold on, hold on. We got a lot of we got a lot of people inside conversation. I'm saying so what's so, the difference between a person being a homosexual and that's all their one sin is, does just say in life, and that's what they struggle with, compared to the newborn again Christian who cusses, beats his wife. Uh, drinks, smokes, and all that. Oh, no sin is greater than any sin. So, here's here's what the word says, Zeke. Zeke, no, I, I, I've said this to you, and what I've said is that while you're here, you need to submit to what's going on here. You don't get to say, Mommy, 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 mommy. Okay, if you want to be here. Let's all be together when this is over with. You can do what it is that you want to do, okay? But while you're here, we're all going to be together. You got that? Get your feet off the court. 
So you can sit here or you can go home and get ready for bed and take a shower. Which one? Huh? She's doing whatever she's doing. She gave you two options, here or home. You don't get to choose another one. Okay, so here's, it's, listen to your question, the answer to your question. This is First John, we're coming out of our text and going to, to answer your question. We're going to First John 3 and 4. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You Wait, know that he approved the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. They were in the wrong thing. I'm sorry. I don't know what you, are you. I thought you were in First John chapter one. First John chapter three. No. Oh, that's why. So, okay. so I said to answer his question, we went to First John three. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought we said I, we were looking at verse three, so we were we weren't on the same. Page. What version are you in? This is the ESV. Okay. Okay. Sorry, start again. Okay, so this is chapter three of First John, verse four. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he, talking about Christ, appeared in order to take away sin. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. Is that clear? I'm going to point something else out so there's a clarity. Now watch this. You go over to first chapter of 1 John and we see something else. Start at verse 5. Y'all with me? Tell me when you're ready. Ready. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Watch this. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Question. If God cleanses us by sin, how comes to light? This night you're trying to be funny. No, I know. How do some people keep going back to the same sin? Because they haven't been sanctified. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're going to skip ahead. I'm, I'm going to come back to your question because it'll tie into to Robbie's question. So what's the difference between a, than a person who's just, you know, always cussing people out, beating their family, the wife, and doing the food and all that kind of stuff, and the person who is just living a straight-up ungodly lifestyle? Nothing. Yeah. Because that person who is continuously practicing unrighteousness though they profess it have evidence that they are not of god okay exactly that's okay. all I'm getting at. now watch this we have to be careful because while we have come to faith in christ while we have believed on him and we receive him we must be sanctified what does that mean sanctified the word sanctified means be set apart unto so 
if if I wanted to sanctify something, I want to use an example. I want to take my watch and I want to sanctify it from my arm. No, let me do something a lot easier. I want to sanctify this ring from my hand. How do I do that? Take it off. And I just take it off, but I have removed it from my hand. Yeah. But here's the thing. I did it quickly, but you got to think about the process of actually grabbing it from actually grabbing it to making sure you're actually moving it from the hand and then being able to remove it from the hand. Get that charger Separate it from the hand. So what happens is when we come to Christ, we are his. We have been saved and we have benefited from his salvific work. However, we are yet being saved through the process of sanctification. And how are we sanctified? We jumping around a little bit today, but I'm going to go ahead on purpose. John chapter 17, where Jesus prayed his what they call high priestly prayer. In this, he says something that we need to take very close, give very close attention to. He says, but now I'm coming to you. This is John 17 and 13. He says, but now I'm coming to you, talking to the Father, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. He was specifically praying for his disciples at that time. What are you doing? Stop. He says, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. What, what was that? This is John 17. And this statement is. A lot is of John's in here. Today. Yeah, we in John. That's what we in. John. John 17 and 17. He says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. So what is he saying? Set them apart in the truth. In other words, set them apart in the word. So if you go back to what John started talking about when he started talking about in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and everything that was made was made by him. God makes us to be separated in the truth for the truth and by the truth. But here's the thing. If we don't give ourselves to the truth by our continual reading, studying, hearing, and rightly hearing, reading, and studying of the truth, then do we have it? So basically, you need more than prayer. You need more than prayer. You need prayer and the word. So when people say, oh, I prayed about it, I repented, and I'm, but you actually have to do the work to make it. You got to do, it's called, you, put in. you got to put something in. We've been reading in Psalm 119 with the girls, right? And at the beginning of Psalm 119, it actually says these words. Let me find it real quick. No. So listen to this. It says, how can, two, there's two verses I want to mention. How can a young man keep his way pure? What did the writer say? By guarding it according to your word. You got that chart or this? No. Go, go, wait, I'm going to take it home. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So here we have two perspectives that communicate to us the importance of the word. One, the word helps us to keep our way pure and when the word is stored in our heart it helps us to not sin against god so here is the reality how is it that we are able to witness unto the truth how is it that we are able to not be the type of people who choose lifestyles that are contrary to the blessing of our existence it's by giving ourselves to the word. 
and then being witnesses of the word, not of ourselves, not of our authority. And, and one thing that you want to know to be important, this is a part of the recap of where we were before y'all jumped on. And that is this. It said that John came as a witness to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. Okay. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The other side of it was when you move on, when the Jewish, the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to speak to him. They were asking him, are you the Christ? They were asking him, are you Elijah? They were asking him, are you the prophet? Why? Because they were wanting to know by whose authority are you doing this? So they were not asking him, then who are you like? What's your name? What's your family or anything? They were saying, who have you come from and whose authority has given you the ability to baptize and cleanse people? Because you show didn't come from our authority. Okay. So when we look at this text, we see for us, we can ask ourselves the question, are we, are we truly witnessing for Christ or are we witnessing for ourselves? Are we witnessing for what makes sense to us, what seems good to us, or are we witnessing for that which glorifies God? Because if we do that, we can have a whole lot less fear. Come on, come on. We have a whole lot less fear. So, did you get the answer to your question before you left? Not really. Okay. <laughs> so, you remember what the question was? Yes, sir. <laughs> no. All right. So, the question was related to, so. Oh, yeah, sin. Why do people keep going back to their same sin? So, why do people keep going back to their same Today sin? Is because, no. So, so, here's the thing. You got two situations. You have one where a person is intentionally practicing sin, okay? Then you have another situation where a person has made a genuine profession of faith, but they are failing to store up the word of God in their heart so that they don't sin against God. See, we can only be sanctified unto righteousness by the truth, right? And what is the truth? Jesus said it's the what? It's the, word. the word. So if the word sanctifies us, in other words, separates us from our sin then how can we be separated from our sin without the thing that separates us from it did anybody else read the bible and it's like and store up all these things that come out because yeah. i don't like confessing because i'll just yeah. be like all right i'm gonna just think about it okay you don't <laughs> like confessing but if we don't confess we don't find forgiveness yeah. he said if oh, i confess to him yeah. no no Sometimes it requires we have to shop in no iron. <laughs> no, no. So in many <laughs> instances, everybody. it requires confessing among the brothers. Why? When I say the brothers, I mean the family of faith. Why does it require that? Because we then refresh you with the oil. Remember, we talked about that? The oil. What's the oil? We refresh you with the spirit of God. Before you can go in the house. And the spirit of God. <laughs> And why was that important, though? It was important because when God would look at them, they would see no his sin. righteousness. He would see his righteousness. He would see them as clean. Why? Because they were clean as a result of their submission to the word. I thought we don't slam lambs anymore. Because the lamb was already slain once for all. It was he God was said Jesus. To be the lamb, so so no one needs to do that anymore. It was his. Well, you covered it all. It, but it's in here. It's in Hebrews. Once for all, it, it's also in in uh, many of Paul's writings. It's the word. This is not just written for the purpose of being yeah. good information and the number one selling so, book of all time. Now I'm like, oh, that's, uh -huh. she she knew something that I didn't know. Go girl, you better let me know. <laughs> it said, well, it said Jesus covered the sins from before he was born. He covered the sins from all time, from before, from during that time, and any sin that would ever be committed in the future. He was the one only pure sacrifice. Amen. 
But so what we, I was getting to before they came on is that I'm starting to realize every time I talk about God, it's like they store up all these things. Why? Do you know? I I know. <laughs> no, no. Do you know why? Yes. Okay. Why? Because it doesn't align with him. Okay. And because it doesn't align with him allows what? It allows me to... to, to make the process it, it gives me the thought like are uh, it basically tells me and sends me a signal are you ready to let these things go and, and what's that call called him? and what's that called the flesh. sanctification, sanctification. <laughs> see sanctification. when the word when the word comes and it exposes no that's something else when the word comes and you start feeling like stuff just exposing what's going on in him was light and that life was the light of men the light shines in darkness and the darkness does not overcome it so you got hope because his light he is the light is shining on your darkness exposing it in order that he might perform a such a surgery to remove it from you that's called sanctification oh painful it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have such a great, that's why when we grow in our faith in him and we submit to his sanctification process, we sit in front of people like Ebony and people like Christy and Robbie and say, you in the best place you can be in because you about to be made whole. You about oh, to be no, good. Yeah. This is about to be awesome. We can sit in front of this new believer and this new believer and say, guess what? You're right where you need to be, where he can just make you new the same that dark as hour was just before the day it's true it's true i don't get it basically these <laughs> tend to at, worse at night, or build up at even night, our emotions and at everything. night before it gets oh back. the storm comes before the calm exactly yeah, it's another term. Term. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but it's the same thing it's <laughs> like at night before it's sunrise like that's the darkest point no 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 like mm -hmm. if it's if sunrise is Three, 549 two, three -ish or somewhere yeah there. it whatever sunrise is then sunrise the point before that that's the darkest hour so before there's sun there's the darkest point same thing with it before the storm is over is the worst part well, i guess because i guess i kind of confessed it because i was just oh, like i feel so uncomfortable because i'm just having all these thoughts and i'm just like Ugh. yeah it, yeah it's it designed doesn't feel to do good. that's what the word does it's powerful it's sharp you know it cuts away things from us, but it but also I do us. know myself that I happen to go back to my sins repeatedly. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, I wonder if there's something deeper that's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. Well, the devil doesn't have to attack me because I'm alone a lot. Yeah, but like this, this is what holds us together, you know? And if we're not feeding on that, I was, you were talking about this the other day, if we're not continuously taking this in, I, we don't have anything to fight with. Yeah, because I used to be content with being alone in my past, but I, I use other sources to be to content. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm You so got to just deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The darkest hour is just before the day, you know? So well, you pressed it in the right direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think yeah. also, Ebony, like, for some reason, um, Ebony and I grew up in church, and it we didn't feel alone because we were actually in the church a lot of the time. We were doing choir. We were doing whatever. Like, we're kind of just always in church. And then the more you get away from that, like, you don't have a fellowship of people around you that are also... Mm -hmm a part of the church it does it just gets very lonely because the world just doesn't have much to offer once you really know like True, good God. people and godly people and you know his you have his people around you to help you or guide you or whatever it is it, it's very lonely yeah you know yeah and i think we've gotten to the place where we just don't have a lot of people around us like to encourage us and so it is important like y'all are saying, to have the word and to have, um, to fight the battle, mm -hmm. fight the battle of your flesh when you're on your own, fight that fight. Sometimes it is just like 
you versus the devil or you versus your flesh, you have the word to help you. Part two was part? me is being vulnerable with someone, like having to people? meet people of Christ and I'll be vulnerable again and not knowing the outcome of what my truth is, how it's going to affect your opinion. So mm -hmm. here's here's the reality. Mm -hmm. When you're among... I don't know where I'm when, when you're among true brothers and sisters, you need to know that you can say whatever needs to be said, and there is love. Amen. Listen to me. Straight listen up. to me. See, Christ, John was the disciple, and I tell you, he's such a wonderful disciple. He was the disciple whom Jesus loved, okay? And he talked about love in a way that no one else could speak of. So much and so that it is to be understood that we bear all things. Love covers the yes. multitude of our sin. Yes. And when there is a pure heart before God, there is an awareness that our sin is not strong enough to keep us from loving one another. Amen. There is no sin great enough to keep us from loving one another because it is the sin that was upon our Savior that was massive, past, present, and future, and it never once kept him from showing his love to us. It said while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Mm -hmm. He died. So guess what? There's nothing that we can say to each other. We can look in each other's eyes at our most vulnerable point and say, you are loved. Not just by God, but God's love abides in us, so we love you. Thank you. Amen. Like y'all, y'all look at our family, but don't don't really understand that our family has had some dark days. Dark days. We have had times where we absolutely were not sure how we were going to even make it together. I'm not even talking about make it from one day to the next with means. I'm talking about, is this going to work? I don't know what's going to happen because it just I'm seems like it lives, was so you know, dark. But guess By what? Myself, Our nobody. only hope. <laughs> Listen, it's not that we didn't have anybody. We didn't have people who could understand us in certain regards. But the, people, but the people who God had for us were not supposed to be close. Yeah. They were not supposed to be close because we had grew up, we grew up in an environment that had confidence in people yeah. rather than confidence in the spirit of God in people. So we had to learn how to have confidence in the spirit of God in people by having it first among one another. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't like obviously I had bad experiences and like this is not even about me, but do they hang up? No, it's just the phone turned down. Oh. There's <laughs> but um, you remember how I told you I was like, oh, I have two friends, basically Christy and Whitney, and I called them my little saints because mm -hmm. like they was the ones that was still involved in Christ and still going to church and still praying. And I was the one who was constantly keep straying. And each time as I strayed, and obviously I want to be dwelling in it and be alone. I when I got around them, I always confessed my sins. And I was like, hey, I did this. And because they was so receptive of it yeah. and was loving, no matter what I told them, yeah. they still loved me through it. Mm -hmm. And was like, all right, well, I'm gonna pray for you. Yeah. And that meant a lot to me because most people probably wouldn't be like, oh, she's not a good influence on your life. Or, right. She's not a good person. Or, she's not a good friend. Yeah. Versus they was looking at my heart versus my sins. Mm -hmm. So, but I straight so you, so, so, <laughs> so you know what that feels like. Yeah. So I want to share something with you. When you said, uh, you know, confess your sins, them praying for you and all of that, this came to my mind and I just want to share it. Remember the woman caught in adultery. Mary. Mary Magdalene, right? Or Mary of Magdalene. Didn't yeah, she do more than adultery, though? But she was caught in adultery. Okay. They they brought her. She it was, was Mary? No, no, no. It was no, it was probably was, that they 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 probably set it was probably a setup so that they could try to catch Jesus in some type of uh uh technicality of the law being yeah. misused, right? So when they brought her to Jesus, they said, I thought Jesus teacher. found her. 
No, no, they brought him to. Yeah. They brought oh, her to Jesus. Is wrong. Okay, yeah. they brought her to Jesus, <laughs> and they said to him, "I'm paraphrasing it like in the story." They said to him, "All right, this woman was caught in adultery. Moses' law says this. What do you say?" And so he stoops down on the ground and starts writing. Now it doesn't say what he was writing, but many scholars believe that he may have wrote certain things with regard to the law. Possible. It could be that he was just showing this figure right here wrote the law. So, you know, just know watch who you're messing with, right? Who knows? I, I, I haven't seen it. It's not really here. It is what it is. So he said. How do you know about it if you don't, if it's not in the Bible? Because of historical uh, references. So there, there are people who have actually written about historical context of the scripture so you can have an understanding of what was happening at that time. So that's where we do a little more background and study. That's why I said historical reference says there are those who believe this is likely what happened, but then, you know, there are those who were believing he was likely conveying something in a metaphorical sense or both. Okay. So he then makes the statement, you who are without sin, let him cast the first stone. Oh, now, that was that part. Now watch this. One of the reasons they begin to drop their stones and walk away is likely because the law said that you had to bring the man and the woman caught in adultery. But there was no man present. It's possible that the man who brought her was one of the men who brought her was also one of the ones who was with her because it was a setup very likely that's what the historical record indicates that possibly there was some stupid stuff going on because they continue to try to catch jesus in something that they could ensnare him with does yeah. that make sense okay. okay so it's not a matter of all those details but they had to put their stones down not because they were sinful men it was because they were found guilty of the law they were asking him to condemn her under. You with me? So basically, you wanted her Same to be way. condemned for the adultery, but you was actually the person that was with her, so you're condemned too? Or you did not actually follow the law as you are asserting that you did. Because there are other things that this law says that you're not dealing with. That's truly really what he was saying. Yeah. Okay? So then watch this. All the accusers drop their stones and leave. The woman looks up and Jesus says, woman, where are your accusers? She said, I have none. He said, neither do I condemn you. Neither do I accuse you. Neither do I actually condemn you according to this law because there's no one to condemn me. He said, but this is what you need to do. Go and sin no more except if you continue to do so, worse things will happen to you. You with me? But didn't you say Jesus said we sin all the time? How did she not? Hold on, listen. I'm about to you you just helped set it up for yourself. Mm -hmm. What did this woman do after that? She followed Jesus. She was a follower of him. She was a follower of his teaching. Where he went, she was there. She saw his life. She observed his life. So the only way she could not sin anymore is that the one who saved her, she had to give herself to him. And this time, not in a sexual way. Did she still have to repent for? She did. Mm -hmm. Because she began to follow Jesus. What did she repent for if she didn't sin? She repented of her sin. Which means she changed her way. Because repentance at the core, that's yeah, what it's about. You're turning away from the sin that you've been doing. So I'm going to repent the is same it, sin that I was already saved from? No. Repentance is... So when we come to Christ initially, that's an awareness that we are sinners at the core, like in general, okay? And as we are in general sinners and we cannot save ourselves, then we give ourselves over to one who can save us. OK, mm -hmm. as we live our life and the truth of God's word begins to expose what the right thinking is, we have to continue to say, oh, I thought this. This is what I'm supposed to think. So I say, forget this. I'm going to do this. 
that's repentance. So there's an ongoing repentance as we grow in Christ. So we don't have a complete repentance when we first repent. Yeah. Just like we don't have a complete salvation when we first are saved. We must now walk in salvation. We must walk out repentance, right? And we must do it continuously because we are ones who have been born again. And now Christ must be formed in us. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. At the beginning of this feels like a struggle because it's something that you have to change. Mm -hmm. But you can make anything mm -hmm. a daily habit. Yeah. Like my job, which I hate. <laughs> when you want to like it's like once we're committed you gotta be careful with that because your words what i hate my job mm -hmm. are you thankful for it or you hate it i like my job i don't like the people i work with okay watch this <laughs> if you hate your job at some I point i pray for them no no listen to what i'm saying mm -hmm. the words are important if you hate your job then at some point you might not have it if you are thankful for your job then how you deal with your job can continue to advance you on your job. That's repentance. You see, I just told you, this is, this is basically, this is what you think. Here's what you should think. Not just could, here's what you should think. Because the scripture says, in all things, be grateful, give thanks. Huh. Okay. <laughs> for, in, in all things give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you so if you say I don't like this I hate it at some point it's going to be removed well, I already had something on this but alright you said you hate the job right? okay I will be thankful <laughs> but that's the, that's the I thanked him this morning actually I know, but you can't continue to say, I hate my job. Because if he gave it to you, so you're also hating the one who gave it to you. You're right. You, see, that's the importance. <laughs> that's the importance. It's all going, Ebony. It's it's no, because like I actually prayed for this job, but I didn't know it was going to come with this. But guess yeah, what? Do. do you know why you probably have it? What? So it can sanctify you. <laughs> Yeah, that just brought me closer to him. I ain't gonna lie. Because yeah. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking about yeah. him that much. Yeah. Every situation we have, every door he opens is for him to be glorified in us. That's so funny. He's like, oh, I'm gonna give you this blessing, but I'm gonna make you meet me. Mm -hmm. oh, and hey, come on now. But that's the point. We now belong to him. Mm -hmm. No longer to the power of darkness. No longer to the spirit of evil. Yeah, they 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 went out. No longer. Oh, were they trying to? Or I guess so. I can't do that. Like this it. became a heavy Bible study. No, no, <laughs> it, it just it just happened. Oh, and I, happened. I I saw her back happened. on. She might have been trying to say goodbye. So so when it comes down to it, we we've, we've got to know that we are his. We are his possession. We are his slaves. Now you say, whoa, slave. Okay, he's a righteous master. But if he didn't perform the act that he did that caused him to purchase us from that kingdom and bring us into his kingdom, then we would not have been able to be removed from that kingdom. But him bringing us into his kingdom is not necessarily that we are slaves in a unrighteous unjust manner we are slaves in that we have been given the ability to be a slave to what is righteous yeah. a slave to holiness a slave to goodness a slave to truth who wouldn't want to be a slave to that mm -hmm. i think others don't like the term but here's but, the thing guess what but you, that's how you, don't want, you don't want you truth. you don't want truth to work you like a, a but that's what i'm saying i don't like the word because how is it what is how the term was so used. watch this the, you I'm know, not sla against as you slavery know. slavery was used well before our ancestors you know what you read about that because in the bible i remember he like jesus said obey your masters and i'm like how can i not think about if you're doing all these things and still obey him 
or how they say obey your parents. And I'm like, but well, she's talking reckless. Why well, I can't talk reckless back? <laughs> yeah, because it is for the purpose of understanding who the authority comes from. It's not that. It's not your show, mama. So, so when it comes down to it, everything that God created was created to be good. The problem is when it's not good. And when it's not good, it's not God. So we go back to where we started with John and we understand. Oh, John. <laughs> and we go back and you, you you listen to everything that was said that in any way we say anything that testified of ourselves no more even if we share what it is that we experienced it was to testify of the power of who christ the power of the word the power of the truth the power of god at work in him through the spirit in us. And so if we are going to understand the value of who John was to be an appropriate forerunner for Christ or for the word, for the light, right? Because we hadn't really heard Jesus's name yet as it pertains to the text. No, if we're, we're going to get before we get to him, right? The next one starts to talk about Jesus. The very next <laughs> sentence which will be next time. <laughs> When we get to start talking about him, we understand who is the word. We understand who is the light, who is the son of God, who is God that was now made flesh. We get to understand, and then we get to understand and see who this man is and what his life does and what his life means and how his life impacts ours. But here's the beautiful part. When we understand that, then we understand how important it is that we be appropriate witnesses like John to prepare the way for Christ in the life of others, to prepare the way for the light in the life of others, to prepare the way for the word in the life of others, to prepare the way for God in the life of others. I feel like I got a long preparation to go before I prepare anyone. <laughs> Before you prepare. But you don't prepare the way. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because like. How, who prepares the way? Jesus does. No, no. We we prepare the way as vessels of who? What? <laughs> we prepare the way as influenced by who? Christ. Okay. And Christ came from who? The Father. Mm -hmm. And God is the who? I mean, the Father is who? God, right? What did it say about John? There was a man sent from God. God has the authority to send us when we're ready. I'm not ready. Okay, then he ain't gonna send you. <laughs> That's what I just said. I know, and I, I wanted to make it clear that it's not that you're not ready because you're not ready or because of your process. It's that God is going to send you. In other words, he's gonna open the doors when you are ready. I just noticed that like, I just feel like it's so, like, I get overwhelmed with stuff. Like, for instance, if I know change is coming, even though I'm asking for change, I'm praying for change, I want change. But if I was to think about everything that I need to change, it would overwhelm me that I might withdraw. So I'd rather try not to think about That's it. That's why you withdraw from the word. Because the word tells you. And when it starts to expose, it seems like it's like, <gasps> And instead of you, you say, it's called rest in the word. That's called surrender to the word. I'm not ready to read it yet. So you just keep else read it. So listen to it. I just don't trust my own thought process reading it. Well, oh no, because okay. the last time I read it, I took it out of context and I got the wrong, I got the wrong message. Which I never had that happen before, but that's literally thought I thought I was like going to teaching. No, a good study Bible will help you with that too. Yeah. If you are by yourself. I have what I call is um uh, I have these four forty songs mm -hmm. book that I'm starting off with. Mm -hmm. And that's actually helped me not not hate uh the Lord. Because <laughs> basically I will open the Psalms and while I will talk to Jesus or whatever I'm going through, it will resonate with what I'm feeling or what I'm going through, and it will just 
it's just songs. And then that's what helps me. And it has like people's quotes underneath it and how they took it. Just like references. Yeah. However, mm -hmm. I want to burst your bubble on purpose because I want to help. About to bust my bubble and tell me to read it. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna tell you to read it. I'm gonna tell you this. Okay. Paul said, "I am not ashamed of the gospel." Which Paul? The Apostle Paul, the so, one who wrote uh, most of the New Testament. The mean one, the, the judgmental one. Yeah, him. The just, yeah. If you want to say, Saul. yeah. Before he, he said, "I am." Boy, he was judgmental. What you talking <laughs> about? Boy, you just, hold on, judgmental because Paul. Paul, the one, the one from Fish? That Paul? Or that Simon? Come on, Peter. Yeah, I'm about to say. Paul, <laughs> I'm I'm about 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 Paul who yeah. wrote most of the New Testament. You know, Paul he was a Paul's role. He just, he tearing up everybody. Killing folks. Like, he, was right. yeah. he was a murderer. He was a murderer. He was a He was persecuting the church. The church. The church. Person that murdered people who were leaving in Christ and the fallen in Christ? Yeah. Now, ain't that a word? You hold up, hold up. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 glad, you, so I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said well, why that. Why am I going to have yeah. I'll be like, now don't you feel something? Because <laughs> initially, shoot, they was like, when he, I think when he was converted, they were kind of like, yeah, we you, think you he ain't here you trying to catch God. going to kick me out by me, Paul. <laughs> I was like, I got questions. <laughs> Paul, come on. But yeah, you know, he was Saul first, right? Before his conversion. That is crazy. Yeah, he was tearing that is up. A, that's a word. That's a yeah. miracle. It's like, I'm going to take the person that killed my own children. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be looking at my father I'm and be about like, to pull that up for you were supposed too. to condemn him. I mean, he, meant he went on to do great and mighty things in Christ. Because so Jesus said, people. vengeance is mine. So what vengeance does he take? Is it like, See, when I think vengeance is mine, I'm thinking like, oh, God, about to like, hurt you. Up. Mm -hmm. But it's his vengeance like, to now say him, no, his vengeance can be where he slice you up, slice you and dice you, but he doesn't always exercise his wrath. He also is a god of mercy too. So I sometimes you have many warnings. Be burned, you know. All right. You said it earlier that no sin is greater than the other. But I believe that sin is all coming up. But then also, like, I read a story about. How when you plant the seed in a child, that they do it to others when they grow up? Well, yeah, hurting people hurt other people. Mm -hmm. All right, I want you to hear this. <laughs> I want you to hear what this man Paul said. Which Paul? The murder Paul? The one, that was, the yeah. one who used to be Saul but converted to Paul. He stopped that murder people, Saul. Yes. He said Peter's this. Done. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Let me explain. The Psalms are good, but the Psalms don't have the articulation and clarity of the gospel. For it is the gospel that has the power to salvation. Can I tell you what my child like mine think? Mm -hmm. I don't want to do the words. I want to be a miracle, like how God just touched them and like you're mm -hmm. like you're saved. I know you do. I'm like Jesus, come on, just touch me one time. See, the so miracle, I ain't gotta do the words. If, if you want to be a miracle, if you want to be a miracle, submit to sanctification because that. Define sanctification again. I need more the process you you look just you go look it up sanctification <laughs> he ain't gonna tell me i'm gonna tell you the basic sanctification is the separation of something from something else the process word sanctifies s-a-n-c-t-i-f-i-c-a-t-i-o-n there ain't no n in there it's s-a-t-i-s sank s-a-n sank Saint, Saint, S A N C. Oh wow! Oh, okay, yes. The satisfaction. <laughs> oh, I can't read it either. Sanctification. Oh Lord, I'm about to miss it. Well, Sean, you supposed to help me out. Why you didn't tell me that was the wrong word? Yes, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what you had. Sanctification. There it is. There we go. My mind is burnt out. So, so here's here's what happens. Here. Here's what happened to Paul. Who was Saul? This man 
was breathing out threatenings. This is in Acts. Oh my God, do you know the Bible in and out? Nope. Uh, you would think he does. Most things he can, but. Cause he's like. Leonard like has a way of, he studies the word like, it's a part of life for him really. Like he could just be in regular day life and you know, in, in the midst of his work and business, like the word is in there too. So like, if he's looking up something for work, the word may be there too. It's something, it's like just a part of life. So a lot of things that he knows, I've come to understand, you know, and just kind of observing him is because this is like, he's constantly thinking, he's constantly, you know, concerned about things and wondering like how this works and that works. And he makes reference to the word. He'll pick up his Bible in a minute and be like, Huh, you know, I wonder what the word has to say about this or that. So it's a part of his. Oh, you got signs of the muscles, huh? So what's mm -hmm. that word called? It starts with an R. <laughs> say what? what is when you try to, when you retain information, no, it starts with an R. You just said retain. <laughs> if it's not, is it retained? When you remember something and not forget it, it starts with an R. Uh, I guess remember. <laughs> Anyways, but when I was saying you exercise, because <laughs> like, so. And people like, oh, exercise your muscles so you could always remember it. Or like oh, repetition. Yes. Reinforcement, repetition, reinforcement. Yes. Yeah, I mean, and like, I, I but you use it. the word for everything. It, he does. I rehearse it over he does. and over again. There's it rained. This is a beautiful example. thing, but it's also like ooh, right it now. was when it snowed and we have that freeze. Mm -hmm. He just had a thought about I don't know what the word says about um about snow. About snow. There's just things like that. He'll go and start. And he came up with a whole. I God gave him a whole <laughs> message. Is it the word? He preached a whole message about the snow situation and God God's intentions. God says it's like snow beautiful, snow. but frightening at the Damn. same time. <laughs> his dad took him to the table a lot with the word growing up, so it's always just been a part of his life from a kid in the car. They so y'all used to it. He used to it in a way I'm not used to it. <laughs> he made the word about everything about a shoe. If a shoe falls out the sky, <laughs> he, might, he probably would. Yeah, no, it depends. It depends on the circumstance. So, what does the murderer say? So, but Saul, still breathing threats. This is Acts 9. Still breathing threats. Mind you, this was after Stephen was stoned and he was standing there holding the coats. I'm just saying, I just want you to hear, listen. So the Stephen was one of the, he was a, a very influential deacon in the early church. And he was a powerful preacher, not just a great servant, but he was a powerful preacher as well. And so he, he was, you know, growing strong in his proclamation to where it ended up causing him to be intersected, to intersect the religious leaders. And they brought him into question, and he preached one of the most powerful messages you could ever imagine. And they started stoning him. And they killed him right there on the spot. While they were stoning him, he looked up and saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. You told me died. this last time. You, you, I think you yeah, mentioned it once probably before. Did. Probably so did. he was smiling so, as he was dying. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Woo, that's a wonderful thing. This is oh all crazy. God. But you got to understand how beautiful that was for him to have spoken the word of truth in a hostile environment. But it was the truth. Was and, oh, man. And they started stoning him for it. And here it is. He gets to see the glory of God. And this is my belief. Watch this. The word says, no man has seen God and lived. This man saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. What say it again? No, no man has seen God and lived. So I think the reason he died was because he saw God. God said you can't live. That's what I think. It wasn't because he was getting stalled. It's because God said you come from le from labor to reward, sir. Come on, let me glorify you. Let me let you see my glory before you die. God, God, God called him home. God called him home. That's what that was, if I believe. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that happened, and while that was happening, Saul could not partake in it because of at that point he was, for whatever reason, either he wasn't old enough or something. I can't remember what it was. I, I gotta go back and look at it. Anyway, 
some time after that, when he got to the point to where he could kind of do some things, he started asking for some letters. And let's read. Why did he ask for letters? But Saul, still breathing threatens, I'm sorry, threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, that's what they used to call it, believing in Christ, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. For what purpose? Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, Damascus. And you will be told what you are to do. Jesus didn't even tell him. He said, just go into the city and you'll be told what to do. And he did it. That's gangster. <laughs> Watch and, this. And he did it. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to, Anna, to, said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight. And at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying and... He has seen a vision, a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But God, blinded him. Blinded him. <laughs> but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who, are, who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go. For he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me to you that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized and taking food, he was strengthened. Oh, there's more, but I'm going to just stop there. Hmm. See, as a human, I can get past the fact that God chose to save him and to use him. For his glory. Maybe that's why you keep running from his word. Because you can't believe that he chose to save you and to use you and fill you. Mm -hmm. I got a question she, about She's this. 11 and thinks the same thing. You know oh. why? You know why? Let me explain why she does. Because the devil is shrewd. He does not care who he seeks to destroy. So it ain't got nothing to do with you. It's lies that he is continuously trying to put into our thoughts to cause us to believe and therefore disregard the truth who is Christ. You've been granted to believe on him. He knows it, but he says, I'm going to still keep lying to him. I'm going to still keep lying to him. You've actually been given his spirit, evidenced by water baptism, evidenced by... Coming from up under the word. It was a second probably, but guess what? Your body, <laughs> I your didn't body, know second baptism. <laughs> <laughs> your body. Are you a prophet? I don't know. <laughs> but your body resonated with the fact that it was in a state of I can't breathe. What does that for you? When it comes down <laughs> to it, the truth is when you come when you, when you come up, that's 
breath of new life. Because the reason you were put down was because of this man's death, because of belief in his death, burial, and resurrection. And that never changes. But the devil does not stop lying. I have a confession. So the first time I got baptized, I wanted my family to come, they didn't come. <laughs> Go figure. So I got baptized the second time in high school at Christie's Family Church, and my family didn't come. So I think I got baptized for selfish reasons. One, to be displayed. Mm -hmm. for you like hey, you the third three? time or the second time? Oh, three she's saying i don't oh, think okay. i got a third one i think oh, i thought you said three i feel like i got a third one. Oh no that was a bible study in order to join this group this group no oh, okay. yeah no so are you saying that you have repented of your sins but you don't believe you've had a genuine baptism to evidence that you have you have been forgiven of your sins and being given over to Christ. Yep, yep, yep. Because I feel like I just did it just to be like, notice. Okay. Oh, it sounds so vain, but it, I feel no, like it's so it's true. true. Talking yeah. to people who can help. <laughs> it you. sounds so true. So, uh, so I remember in high school how I felt sad, like, oh, they dunked me in the water, and I was just like, I didn't feel like I had that genuine connection to be like, oh, I'm getting baptized for mm -hmm. my father. I think I, my connection was like, I just want to be noticed and people see that I got baptized and just tell me I got baptized. Mm, well, I mean, I'm sure so, a lot of people. So why are there. you, why are we baptized? Okay. To Meaning, I'm going to, to I'm going to read it to you, you know? So, so here's the question. Man. In heaven? So when we you. receive the word of Christ, when we hear the gospel, when we hear the truth of God, we are to evidence that we have awareness that it is impossible for us to do anything to save ourselves, right? That said, the question is, then why do we get baptized? Were you in the That's fine. I don't well, think I'm saying because I didn't right? get really I get verbally get baptized. So you never had a genuine baptism. But I got baptized. For what purpose? What, watch this. I'm going to just read this to you. I, I just got to read it to you so you understand. So Peter preaches his message, message on the day of Pentecost, right? After this, there's something that happens. It says, now when they, all the people who were there, and they were listening to him, heard this, they were cut to the heart. This was his message, right? And said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Meaning, now that we've heard what you said and we understand what you said, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what purpose? For the forgiveness of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Did he say... Be baptized, every one of you, for to be seen. <laughs> I, I want you to understand the distinction of words. I say this. When I feel like... I want you to understand what I understand I'm saying. It. Okay. Did he say, for to be seen? So basically, you said I didn't have a real baptism. I'm going to explain why. Like, you, you got to understand the power of these words. Did he say... For to be seen. No. Let me tell you why that's important. If it's for to be seen, there's nothing after that. Watch this. If you are baptized, that's in water. And I know this because when you go and do research on the word that this word is translated from, it's actually speaking of actual immersion or putting in water for cleansing. There's another word. Listen to me carefully. That when John talks about he baptizes, talking about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, it's a different word. And that word is to overwhelm or be submerged in. So the distinction is that this is a different type of baptism. This is an external representation. You with me? Okay. This is in water. But why? He says, be baptized, every one of you, one, in the name of Jesus, and two, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Why is that important? Because then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let me explain why that's important. It says in the name of Jesus. What was Jesus? Meaning more so, what is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Is he not the lamb that was slain? Remember, in the beginning, before you could go into the holy place, in the most holy place, listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to explain it real quick. Before you could go into the most holy place, you had to slay the lamb. Who was the lamb? Jesus. Okay, so that's number one, the lamb. Number two, you had to actually wash. Where's the washing here? Baptism. Yeah. And number three, there was oil to be poured over them. See what I mean, yeah. To represent that the spirit of God was over them. So they were made new, but they were made new in that they were overwhelmed by God. Do I have the spirit of God? Have you been baptized? For the forgiveness in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, or have you been baptized for to be seen? You made me go home and be scared now because no, I'll be praying over my me. house. Listen to me. If you listen to me. I don't want to get attacked. Listen to me. No, no. This will give you life. No, get attacked by you ain't getting no attack by nothing. <laughs> we'll get in that to the, another day. Okay, listen to me carefully. Have you been baptized in water in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your, your sins? I think I said yes. Okay. Gabrielle. Sir. Come here. Come here. Have you been baptized in water in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? Yes, sir. Gianna. Have you been baptized in water? In the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Yes, sir. Have you been baptized <laughs> in water several in the name of Jesus? No, no, not, no, no. not several times. Listen, I came to her last on purpose. <laughs> Have you been baptized in water in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins? I have. Truly, when, once. Hold up, tell me when. It just happened in November 2020. Huh. Look at that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. I was listening to a message. I don't even remember what the message was about, but the Holy Spirit was convicting me about that because I felt like because I had been dunked in the water because I had never really been uh, given to understand the importance of baptism. Mm -hmm. Um, and all the churches. Mind you, in. mind you, we were in a charismatic Pentecostal denomination, so the Holy Ghost has nothing to do with water to them. It has everything yeah. to do with. And then you start this. To sing in the tongues. Yeah, and that's it. Right. That's all they care about. Right. So because and that, of that, that's a lot because that you don't read that right here. But go ahead. Yeah. So because of that, I just figured because I was in water at some point, it satisfied. You know. But when he got to explaining the order of how our salvation should work and as we even grow and develop, like there's a whole process. I was like, oh, I didn't follow that process. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a reason I came to her last. You know, so as a result, he came in and I explained to him what I was, you know, feeling convicted about and unction that I How long have been married? I just need to know this. Over 14 years. <laughs> I just yeah. it just keeps getting better and better because the yeah. for me is like I feel like huh 